We hope that you enjoy this message. For additional talks, please visit abcchurch.com. Uh, so we've been on this series called Hurdles, and it's all about removing hurdles that may get in the way of our faith, of uh, us being close with Jesus and our relationship with him. And I think that uh, it, the series has been great. I think Pastor Ian has done an amazing job um, at preaching. I just love hearing him speak, and I love all of his stories, and I especially love his WWE uh, impersonations. They're the best. Um, come on. Uh, but, so today, uh, what we're talking about is uh, something called pain and suffering. Everybody say pain and suffering. Has anybody ever gone through some pain and suffering in here? Yeah, I think, I think most of us have, if not all of us. Um, and today, I, I really want to focus on this question of why does God allow bad things to happen? Or why do bad things happen to good people? Or if God is so good, then why is there bad things going on in the world? Why does he let all these things happen? Um, and so we're just going to dive straight into this. And so uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is this thing, and it's called a life of free will. A life of free will. Now, everybody in here is human. Everybody in here has a brain. Everybody has thoughts. Everybody has their own life. Um, And we are all able to do pretty much whatever we want. Every day you get up, you make a decision to get up at whatever time you get up. If you're like me, you want to get up at 5 a.m., but the reality is, is that you get up at like 7.30, maybe 8 on some days, and then you have to get dressed, you have to get ready, you got to pick out what clothes you're going to wear, you got to pick out if you're going to eat breakfast or not, if you're going to skip, how you're going to go into the office, what you're going to work on. Uh, we have to make decisions every single day of our lives, no matter how big or small. And the reason that we are able to do that is because we have this thing called free will. Free will allows us to pick and choose and do whatever what we want to do. Now, in the Bible, we can clearly see that uh, God gave us this free will in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. When God had created Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden. They were the first humans that he created on earth. And he tells them this. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. So in this passage, God has created man, set them in this garden called Eden, and it's a garden, so there's trees, and the trees are good for fruits, and he says, you can eat from any tree that you want to, but if you eat from this tree, you will surely die. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Even before the fall, God gave us this opportunity to pick from whatever tree to eat from. He said, you are free to eat from any tree, and I think we Most of us know how the story ends, right? Is they eat from the wrong tree, and that creates the fall of man, and the first sin was born, and they realized that they were naked and ashamed, and they tried to hide from God, which is weird because you can't really hide from God. And uh, one decision led to another. And because of free will, it can result in a couple of things. But I think it's important to know that God has given us the freedom to choose. God has given us the freedom to choose. Whatever you do, Whatever you do, you can, like, if you really wanted to, you could probably just start, like, screaming in the middle of service. Uh, It'd be really weird. I mean, not like that scream, but like a shrieking scream. Uh, That would be weird. I'm fine with the amens, the hallelujahs, preach a white boy, whatever. That's fine. Uh, But if you start shrieking like a banshee, that might be a little weird. You're free to do it, but you might get some dirty looks, especially from the people around you. Uh, But God has given us the freedom to choose what we do with our lives, with every little decision, with every big decision. Um, Has anybody remembered a time in their life where they had to choose something or make a big decision, and you may have not chosen the best thing to do? Anybody? Anybody in here made a wrong decision? Yeah? I think we all have, especially all the adults. I know we all have. At one point or another, we have made a bad decision in our life or a wrong decision. Um, it's, it's so important to know that God does not force himself onto anyone. God is not saying, well, you can only eat from this type of tree. Uh, you are only able to eat these trees, and you cannot eat this one at all whatsoever. He says, well, you must not, which means that they still have the opportunity to do so. He didn't lock it off. He didn't cage it up. It was right there out in the open. 
What do they, they, they do? They ate from it. God has given us the freedom to choose. It's important to know that he's not this controlling God. He's not trying to nitpick every little decision that we, we have to make. He's not trying to say, okay, well, you need to do this by this age, and this needs to happen by the time you're 34 or whatever. God is not controlling in that way, but God gives us the free will to follow his will if we desire to do so. And I can tell you this is that God's will is so much better than anything else in this world. If God was this controlling type of God where he is expecting you to obey his every single move and order it's like some dictator and there's consequences if you don't, it would get a little bit weird. God gives us the freedom to choose what we do in our lives because he loves us so much that he says, okay, I'm going to give you free reign to do whatever you want. You can follow my commands, you can follow my will for your life, or you can pursue your own thing, but I love you enough to give you the freedom to do so. Take it if you were in a relationship with someone here on earth, and they try to be super controlling, control your every move, control who you talk to every single day, uh, it, it wouldn't feel like love, right? It would feel like they, they just want to control you. They're just trying to have this like supreme authority over your life and be the super controlling figure. It wouldn't be love. That would probably be considered abuse. And God is not abusive. He is not controlling. But God gives us the freedom to choose what we want to do with our lives. And with that freedom uh, comes the consequence. And the consequences or the results, the results can be good or bad based on whatever decisions that we make. Now, I've, I've made some pretty good decisions in my life from time to time. I think one of the best decisions I've ever made was giving my life to Jesus. Uh, the second best decision was picking Jen to be my wife because she is the best wife I could have ever asked for that I've ever wanted. Um, some other good decisions were moving out here to Colorado, following God's will on our life. Like, we love our church. We love our church family. Um, but then I've also made a fair share of bad decisions in my life as well, um, especially when I was younger and in high school and in middle school. Um, you typically don't make the wisest decisions sometimes when you're young, uh, but I think that's a part of uh, the learning process is you learn from those bad decisions and you learn from those mistakes. But in the grand spectacle of life of the world that we live in, um, it's so much more than just these little bad decisions that can have consequence. Um, there have been so many, like, just mass shootings of lately, especially developed in the last 10 years or so. There's been so many more, and school shootings have become an all-too-common thing, which is horrible. Uh, those are results of free will. And God is not this controlling figure. He's not going to, okay, he, he, he breaks his heart that people are, are dying, that people are using their free will to take others off earth and destroy his creation, but God gives us that free will, and what we do with it is up to us. Not everybody chooses God. Not everybody chooses the, the straight and narrow path, and some people choose a path that's more destructive, a path that's more abusive, a path that's more toxic, a path that's inflicting on others, that's taking others' lives, that's creating tragic incidents in people's lives. And a part of that reason is because God has given us the free will to pick and choose. Not everybody picks the right thing. And we know that. We've been wronged in our lives before. We've had people do us dirty, and we feel like we've been wronged. But in the world, the pain and suffering, a part of that is caused by the free will that we have and people abusing that free will. I think one of the biggest things that we can do, I think the question is, why does God allow pain and suffering? Why do all these bad things happen? And I think we pin the question on God and we say, God, if you're so good, then why are you allowing this to happen? When I believe that God has created us on this earth for a mission to impact those with free will who are already going down this slippery slope into all these things. I think when we ask the question, God, if you're so good, why do bad things happen? It really is kind of like the question needs to come back to us and saying, what are we doing as God's people to impact the world? What are we doing with our free will 
to impact the world and make it a better place? How are we following God's will for our lives? How are we impacting other for the kingdom? How are we showing the love of Jesus to other people who are obviously broken and hurting, and because of that, their free will takes a turn for the worse? In, in this world and this life of free will, it's not just, oh, well, why does all these other things happen with, like, why, does, why are all these other people bad in life? But I think it's, what are we doing to help impact those? When you hear a lot, especially about, uh, I, I want to talk about school students in specific that are committed by other students in the school, a lot of that is caused and fueled and enraged by the way that they were treated by their other classmates, by the care that they received from their peers or their teachers. And I only imagine what would happen if someone had actually reached out to them, shown them the love of God like we are called to do with the free will that you are given, and how would that impact their lives? How would that stop a potential tragedy from happening? As a youth pastor, you, you start to see a lot of depression in kids. You start to see a lot of anger in kids. You start to see all these different emotions going on inside them. And then part of my job is to help kind of like help them sort through those emotions and figure out where God is in the midst of everything and point them in a better direction. We all have free will in this building. There is no one who does not have free will in this building. God has given it to us, so what are we doing with it? What are we doing to impact the question of why is there pain and suffering in the world? Because all it takes is one person to re wreak havoc on a whole community. But then again, all it, uh, all it takes is one person to reach out to them before it even happens. Are you paying attention? Do you see the hurt in your community? Do you see the hurt in people? If you look at people close enough, not like physically close enough, but like you see with more than just your eyes because you are a person of God, you see the spiritual behind people, you see the emotional behind people, what do you see in them? And if you see anger, if you see depression, and you just walk away, I think you're contributing to their pain and suffering. Because I think anybody who's going through something internally just wants someone to talk to, just wants someone to be there for them. Even if like, you don't even know them that well, if you ask them, hey, what's wrong? And they say, oh, I'm fine. If you ask them again, hey, really, like, what's wrong? I see something's going on. You'll be surprised about how much they open up to a complete stranger. A life of free will is an opportunity to take away from the pain and suffering of the world, not contribute to it. And we all know that there's so much tragedy, there's so much death, there's so much negativity, especially in the world that we live in today. My question to you is, what are we doing about it? Are we just coming to church? Are we just hearing a good word? And then we're going back out in the world and just being the same and not caring about anybody except ourselves? What are we doing to help with the pain and suffering of those around us. Because bad things do happen. Free will has plenty of range to go from wherever for whoever. But what are we doing to help impact that? The second thing that I want to talk about is sickness. Is why does God allow sickness? Why does God allow people to get cancer? Why does God allow people to pass on from sickness? And chances are is that we probably have all known someone who's passed on from some type of sickness. Um, and I, I just want to give you this Bible verse because this is, I feel like this one's a little bit more complex than just free will because no one really chooses to be sick. Um, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. When it comes to sickness and God and how he factors into that, um, it's important to know that God has created us. He has created every single one of us in this room. He knew us before we were even in our mother's womb. Um, and he sees the, the greater scheme of earth. He sees the whole timeline. He, he sees our whole lives laid out before us before we even are born. And God has kind of numbered our days. We're all not going to be here one day. And I think 
in, in the, the realm of sickness, when sickness comes into the picture, um, God can heal people. He can work through doctors. He can work through medicine. He can do miracles. And we can pray and we can pray and we can pray. But then sometimes it doesn't happen. And we feel like we've prayed hard and we feel like we've, we believe that God can heal. We've read that God can heal. And it just, it doesn't happen. And, and it feels like this huge letdown. And we're kind of left asking God, well, like why? Like I was praying. I asked you, God, why, why did you let this happen? And I think it's important to know that God's, God's methods are not ours. God knows the time and place for everything. He knows when it's someone's time to go. He knows when it's someone's time to not go. He knows when it's time for a miracle. Even in the Bible, we see Jesus walk around and do miracles for people, and he, he's healing everyone, and then he goes to other places, and he only heals some, and then he goes to other places, and he doesn't heal anyone. Um, miraculous healing isn't something that's necessarily guaranteed through the Bible. It, it's, it can happen. We can pray for it. But it's important to know that God's methods are not ours. It's God's ultimate timing of, of how he's mapping out our lives when we follow him. And, and if sickness comes in the picture and we pray, and it's still a good thing to pray. It's still a good thing to ask for a miracle. It's still a good thing to ask for the doctors to work. And, but it's important to know that God is going to take care of everything in the way that he will. I think sickness has been something that has impacted all of us at one point or another. Um, before I was born, my grandmother on my dad's side, uh, she actually she got cancer and she passed away a year before I was born. And I remember growing up and just hearing stories about her. And I remember imagining her to be this super caring woman who I would have probably loved to spend time with. And I remember just growing up being sad that I never got the opportunity to meet her because she got cancer and it, it took her. And that was something that I, I kind of struggled with for a little bit because I was like, okay, God, well, like, why, why, why couldn't I have met her? I, I really want to meet her. I've always imagined meeting her, and I never am going to get that opportunity. And ultimately, it comes down to I just have to trust in God that he's going to take care of me, take care of that need, take care of my grandmother as she's already passed on and my family and it's hard. It's a lot easier said than done when it comes to someone passing on from sickness. Maybe it's even someone you don't know but was supposed to probably have a big impact on your life. But I, at the end of the day, I know God is higher than I am. I know that he is going to see everything through the way that he is going to orchestrate everything. And so if it was my grandma's time to go. It was her time to go. And I'm going to trust that God knows what he's doing. It doesn't make sense. It hurts. The emotions are all real. But at the end of the day, I think we need to trust God through and through. If it's God's will for someone to go and it's their time, then it's God's will and it's their time. And God's going to take care of them. And they're going to experience everything that we don't even know about just yet. But I think... We need to learn how to trust God a little bit more during those times. Sickness can come unexpectedly. It can come quickly. But I think it's important that we are never going to make full sense of it, of why God took someone at this time or why he took someone at this time. But I know this is that God is still good regardless, and God's will will prevail over everything. His methods are not ours. And this last thing I want to talk about is that God is a sovereign God. He is a sovereign God. And what this means is that God, he, he created the earth. He created everything on it. He created all of us. Uh, he, he is above and over everything. He sees everything the way that it needs to be seen. He sees better than we see as humans. God sees everything that happens. God gave us the free will to do good and to do bad if we want, and I believe that it breaks God's heart when we choose to do bad, especially when it's costing others their lives, when tragedy hits. I believe that it breaks God's heart, but God is sovereign over every single thing in this world, and it's important to know that he is going to take care of you the way that he will, 
God's will will prevail over your life. That is what you use your free will to seek. If you live your life to honor God, he will see you through. Our God is sovereign over the whole earth. And there's nothing that's going to change that. There's no other truth out there that's going to be able to overcome this truth that God is the one and only God, that he created us. There's nothing that you can make up. There's nothing that you can Google hard enough to where you'll come up with some answer. God is over everything in this world. And he oversees all creation. And it breaks his heart when we choose to use our free will for anything other than pursuing His will, and wanting to see his will be played out on earth. You see, our our God is sovereign, and he sees all of our pain and suffering. The Bible even says that he is close to the crushed in spirit. He's close to the brokenhearted, so he sees your pain and suffering. He sees the hard times that you go through. He sees your struggles. He sees your pain. He sees the, the mourning inside you when you lose someone. He sees it all. But we need to know this is that we need to trust God even in the suffering. Even when it doesn't make sense, even when it hurts, even when it's hard, even when you have the question of why, God, are you allowing this to happen? Uh, we need to trust God even in the suffering. In Romans chapter 5, verse 3 through 5, it says this. It says, not only so, but we also receive glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I think another big thing of pain and suffering here on earth, the things that we go through, is that God is refining us through these moments. God refines us through the loss. He refines us through the tragedy. He, it, suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance is something that is so important in this world. And it's important to God. And it's important to his will for us that we persevere through things. And the only way that we're going to be able to persevere is through him. There's no other way around it. You can't get through something without God the way that you are supposed to. And sometimes it may not make sense. Sometimes it's hard to understand. But if we can learn how to trust God, even when it doesn't make sense, he's going to take us and make us into something that we need to be for the next thing that's coming. He's going to make sure that we are going to walk out in his will, that we're going to become the person that he wants us to become. But the part is, is that we have to choose to do that. And it's hard to choose to trust God when you're hurting, when you're in pain, when you just experienced a big loss. It doesn't make sense. It's hard. But we have to learn how to trust God in the suffering. And the last point is this, is that God is all-knowing. God is all-knowing. He already knows everything that's going to happen. He's going to know everything that we need. He's going to know every single experience that we go through in life that's going to have a heavy impact on us. But he wants to refine us through those moments. God already knows. He already knows how the rest of time is going to play out. Are we going to trust in him, the creator of the universe, the creator of you, the creator of the people around you, the creator of your life? Are you going to trust him even when it hurts, even in the suffering? The last scripture is this, Psalms 100, verse 3. It says, know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. God is a good shepherd. He will take care of his sheep. He will make sure that we have everything that we need. Whether one of us gets hurt, he'll make sure that he mends us the proper way. We get the proper care. God wants to take care of us, and he knows us. I I just have one story, and then I'll I'll promise I'll close. Um, But... Uh, at, our, at our last church, when we were, I was first starting to lead youth ministry, um, I was co-youth director with one of our other interns at the time. And um, it, it, was, it was a crazy, crazy year, just like learning how to lead ministry, learning how to lead youth, learning how crazy youth kids are. Um, it, it was a mission um, and a half. It was intense. And during the summer, um, we had one of our students who would regularly suffer from seizures, 
Um, she had gotten treatment for them. She was on medication, and she had been good for a while. Well, one day uh, during the summer, she was watching her little sister and her little cousin, um, and they had kind of just like a, like a two-foot kiddie pool maybe in their backyard, and um, she had a seizure. And I was at work, and I didn't really know what was happening, and so I get a text message from our executive pastor, and he was like, hey, uh, she's had a seizure, but she's going to the hospital. Um, everything should be Okay. Um, like, you don't, like, and I texted him, I was like, do I need to, like, get off work? I can come, I can be there. Like, like what, what do I need to do? I'm, like, trying to learn. I'm trying to, like, okay, how do we, how do we work through this? And he texts me, he's, he's like, no, you should be good. I, like, she's, she's going to be fine. It was just a regular seizure. She's had him before. And I was like, okay. And then as I'm working, I'm working, of course, an eight-hour shift that day. Um, I get on my lunch, and I, my phone is just, like, I have, like, probably, like, 50 text messages. And it's from different people. It's from my co-youth directors, from our executives, from our lead pastor. Um, and the whole story of what actually had happened is as she was watching her sister and her little cousin, she was actually standing in the pool with them. And she had a seizure while she was standing in the pool. And her little sister and her baby cousin were not strong enough to lift her up or out of the pool. They were really young, so they really only knew they called. They didn't call 911 right away. They called, um, like, one of the neighbors or something, and they called 911, and by that time, it had already been probably, like, at least five minutes that she was in the pool, and um, they called 911. They got her to the hospital, and from my understanding is she was, she had had the seizure and then essentially started to drown in the pool, and as they got her to the hospital, they started working, and they, they, tried and tried and tried, and um, they said that she was kind of coming in and out. They would lose her, and then they would get her back, and they would lose her and get her back, and it was just this heartbreaking thing, because at the end of the day, she didn't make it, and this was someone who was really close to me and Jen. Um, she, she was one of our closest students. She loved Jesus. She was serving on our team. This happened on a Monday. She was serving uh, on our Connect team, greeting people as they came in the church on Sunday morning. And she was just so full of joy. She loved Jesus. She was wholehearted. She was genuine. And she was only a freshman in high school, going into her freshman year. So not even technically a freshman just yet. And I remember that I had to be strong because she was a part of our team. We had a team of like 20 students, and they were all super close. And like word had already gotten out, which made it even worse that she had passed away. And so we had all these kids that were figuring out from all these different areas, and we had to gather them all up, and we had to figure it out. And, and I, I didn't know anything. I had never experienced anything like that before. Someone who I was so close to, that was so young, who was so on fire for Jesus, who was so well-loved by her community, just happening like that. And she's gone. And I'm trying to remain strong for all of our kids. And uh, I'm trying to be there for them, be an encouragement to them. And I, I just remember going home and, and just, like, crying my eyes out. Because, like, we, we were close with her. She was, like, one of our own. Jen would watch her when her parents would go out of town. Like, we were close with her. And it didn't make sense. It was hard. It was, like, months of pain and suffering. There was a void that we felt in our team after she was gone. Everyone lost energy. Everyone felt it. It didn't make sense. But I, I had to trust God through the process. I had to trust God even in the pain and the suffering, even when it hurt, even when it didn't make sense, even when I would spend nights crying about it and because it hurt so much. Didn't make sense. I, I, I don't know the exact reason why pain and suffering happens in this world. I know a part of it's people's decisions. I know part of it's sickness. I, I, I don't understand the reasoning exactly of when God takes people when he does. But I know that God is still good through everything. And I know that I can trust him to see me through it. I know God can help me to be refined through those moments. And I believe because of that moment with, with that student and her passing that I, uh, I'm stronger because of it. I, I'm able to carry a part of her legacy and her story about how much she loved Jesus and it's able to be an inspiration to me even. But I, I have to understand 
that even when I don't understand, God is still good. Do me a favor. I want everyone to stand, stand to your feet today. And I'm going to pray, and then we're going to jump into some worship. But I, I, I want you to know um, that whatever you're going through, whatever pain, whatever suffering, whatever loss, whatever tragedy that you've been through, that you are not alone, that ABC Church is here with you, that you have a family that you can depend on, you have someone here at the church that you can talk to, and we will be here for you. But we want you to know that we love you, and we're here for you, and God is good through everything. So Jesus, I pray that um, as we leave this place, that you would be our peace and our comfort with whatever we are going through, God. We pray that as we worship, that you would just speak to our hearts, Lord, and that you would just bring an, an overwhelming amount of peace and joy, Lord. God, that you would guide us through our trials, through our storm, through the hard times, God, that we would trust you even when it hurts. God, that you would be our caretaker, that you would be our caregiver. God, that you would be our, our good, good shepherd as you are, Lord, and that you would take care of us. God, I pray for us to use our free will to pursue you deeper, Lord. I pray that you would speak to us on the daily, God, and I pray more than anything um, that we would know that you are good through everything. God, we love you and thank you. And everyone said, amen, amen. We hope you've enjoyed this message. For additional talks, please visit abcchurch.com.